So I switched from OBS to Riverside for my podcast recording. And in this video, I'm going to tell you why. OBS is great and I'm a very heavy user of OBS. However, it has its limitations, especially when it comes to recording podcast, plus some live streaming features, including obviously the post-production part, especially if you are new to podcasting, even if you are experienced. Things like making short clips out of your podcast recordings or your li long live streams, text-based editing, these are things you're not going to find in OBS. Having a built-in teleprompter while recording your podcast. Multi-streaming, obviously you have that in OBS, but you need an external plugin. And of course, the ease of use when bringing in guests for podcasting or live streaming, you're going to see that there's going to be a big difference between OBS and Riverside. So in this video, hopefully I'm going to be able to help you decide if you should go all in into using Riverside or maybe use both Riverside and OBS like I do or maybe keep using OBS until you're ready for Riverside. So let's not take much time. Let's get into it. What is going on guys? My name is Sam. You're watching my production tips and tools helping you master live streaming. Now guys, just want to let you know that I've been using Riverside, paid for it, mostly for recording my own podcast in I do record some clients' podcasts as well before I even get to partner with Riverside. Now, in this video, I actually partnered with Riverside to be able to show you as a heavy OBS user where OBS actually does shine and where you have some limitations, of course, and of course, show you where Riverside can come in to complement. And of course, like I said in the intro, to show you some of the good stuff that Riverside has to offer when it comes to podcasting and live streaming. So let's get into it. Now, first thing we're gonna talk about, obviously, is gonna be podcasting. Now, starting with OBS, especially if you wanna bring in remote guests to record podcast, obviously, you're gonna need this no built-in tool, by the way, guys, okay? So OBS, first of all, you're gonna need to have installed on your computer, assuming you already know, and you're gonna need a kinda, you know, super powerful computer, with dedicated graphics card and obviously a good processor. So once you have OBS, this assume you have good computer and OBS installed in your computer, you're gonna need to have an external tool. Mostly, if you watch my channel, you're probably familiar with a tool called the Video Ninja. You're gonna go to video.ninja, it's gonna allow you to create a link, like a guest link. Now you're gonna send that link to the guest and the guest is gonna join and then you're gonna go here in OBS and you're gonna uh, bring in that guest link into OBS. So it's a lot of work. So you have OBS running and you have Video Ninja running in the background and of course you're gonna set it up in a way where you can have to create scenes manually by the way and then you're gonna have like you can see i have my microphone here on this scene in obs just to show you an example i have a guest overlay so this is an overlay that i created which is something that you're gonna have to create in obs basically maybe get a designer do it for you or you can even do it yourself if you know how to do it because you want it to look good right and then uh, you're gonna get that link from Video Ninja. So basically it would go here in this corner right here. And then you can have your camera coming in as well. So I just brought in my webcam just to show you guys what it will look like. So this is a typical scene in OBS and that's how you would create. And then what you would do if you wanna record, you can just go ahead and set up the recording settings and everything and be able to record your podcast, no problem. Now what's gonna happen is if your guest internet connection has any issues and you know the quality is not wow, maybe they say they're using Wi-Fi or they're using a phone, right? The quality of the video that you're getting inside of OBS is gonna be determined by the internet quality that the actually your guest has so obviously you can encourage them to use like you know a hardwired kind of connected internet cable ethernet kind of thing but most guests may not have the time to do it or they, they may be on the go and they may try to use wi-fi it happens all the time all right so that's where you start getting affected another thing is if you want to do some editing later because if you record it this way it's going to be baked in right so everything's going to look like this it's going to sound the way it sounds you can download it or if you want to go live multi-stream and record at the same time you can actually do this but this is what the output is going to look like now if you want to record each scene separately and then be able to edit later and maybe add some stuff in there intro outro and other cool stuff especially if you're podcasting then you may need another plugin called source record i believe 
that's gonna allow you to record each source separately now this is possible i even have a video about it but guys this is really takes time to set up and it's also cpu heavy right so it's gonna need really good cpu or processing power from your computer yes it works but yeah it's a lot of gymnastics okay now let's go to riverside now when it comes to riverside the process is gonna be simpler first of all riverside is a browser based which means you don't need a super powerful computer so everything is happening in your browser what's gonna happen this is what it looks like in riverside so if i go to record right so inside my studio so i can add my microphone here mm -hmm in my camera so this is what the studio is gonna look like now what i can do i can go here where it says record someone next to you i can copy this link send to the guest and as soon as they come in they're gonna join me in the studio right here and now what's gonna happen is from here now what i can do i have access to layouts right i can do any layout type that i want i can have a transcript i can have access to my script right while i'm actually doing the recording i can have access to a teleprompter while i'm doing the recording so i have my notes in front of me and i'm able to still do the eye contact to the guest okay i can also see all these layouts kind of available to me obviously i don't have anyone on screen right now which means i can do everything on the fly and I'm going to be able to record, right? And if I want to go live, obviously, I can do the live streaming. Now, this is where Riverside is going to shine over OBS, okay? Because Riverside, once you hit the recording, it's going to do what we call local recording. So basically, it's going to record each feed separately, but it's not going to record it in my studio. It's going to record on the guest computer locally, and my feed is going to be recorded on my computer locally and then they say the internet connection of the guest is bad what's gonna happen is what you're seeing during the recording is not being affected by the poor internet connection so the video feed of the guest is being recorded at full quality and audio raw full quality and as soon as you're done recording it's going to upload that recording into my studio now me like the host and then I can have access to those files and be able to download them. And then I'm going to have full quality audio, full quality video from the guest, and then full quality audio and video from myself. Now, I can do the editing later on and then actually make sure I have high quality video or, you know, podcast. Another cool thing that you're going to have with Riverside that you don't have in OBS is something called, it's a transcript. So if I go here, this is a recording that I just I did. I can go here where it says download and then I can obviously download raw video. I can download raw audio. I can also download like the aligned video. The quality is going to be a little lower. So this is like the one that was recorded in the cloud. And then if I go here where it says transcript, this is right after the recording. I can go here and actually download the entire transcript of the recording of the podcast or the live stream, if you are live streaming, of course. And then with that, you can go in chat GPT if you want. And then you can use the that to create show notes. You can also use to create your title. I mean, that's really good information. But guess what? That's not actually, you don't even need to use ChatGPT because Riverside has something called Co-Creator. This is like a built-in ChatGPT. It's an AI tool kind of baked into Riverside. And then you can go here. Instead of actually, of course, you still have access to your transcript. You can use however you want. But you can also ask anything you want using chat. You ask to create magic clips, Instagram caption. Let's say you have some clips, which is something that you can do in here, of course. Or generate a thumbnail. I mean, the thumbnail so far, it's kind of generic. But sometimes it actually looks good, right? Using co-creator, right? You can even ask it to create like a quick promo clip from the recordings which is awesome now when it comes to live streaming obviously inside of obs you can go live it's really easy you can set up your live stream connect to youtube instagram or any other platform that you want you just click go live and you're gonna be able to go live once you have your destinations connected now if you want to do multi-streaming you need to get a plugin of course i have one of the plugins this a2 multi-stream plugin but one of the problems you're going to have with that plugin, it does work. And there are other plugins, by the way, and they're all free. But one of the problems that you may have is you're going to need enough bandwidth to support 
each destination that you're going to add. So if you're streaming to YouTube and you need 10 megabits per second, and then you add Facebook and you need 6 megabits per second, that means you need 16 megabits per second to hold the stream for both destinations. If you add Instagram or another destination, obviously you're going to, you have to add that on the top of what you already had. So it keeps adding up. Now, if you don't have enough internet bandwidth or internet connection, mostly the upload speed, that's why you start having issues. And of course, to set it up, download it, set it up. If you're not familiar, it may take time, obviously, because this is an external plugin. However, inside of Riverside, if you want to stream, obviously you can take the same studio that you have and set up a live stream, connect to YouTube. But if you want a multi-stream now, this is where it becomes interesting you're going to be multi-streaming, basically, uh, you stream to one destination or to Riverside, and Riverside is going to be because it's in the cloud. It's going to do the distribution to any other platform that you add. So if you want to add Facebook, Instagram, you just have to connect those destinations to your Riverside account or studio. And then as soon as you push the stream to Riverside, it's going to do the distribution meaning you won't need more bandwidth as you add more destinations. Now, another feature is called clipping or creating these viral clips. When you see like after recording or going live, you do like a two hour live stream. And I'm sure you've seen these clips on social media like Instagram, TikTok, either in vertical mode or horizontal, right? That's another cool thing they have in Riverside. So personally, when I create a podcast, I want to be able to promote it, to create clips. So what Riverside, because it's AI-based kind of thing, is going to take the two-hour, one-hour long live stream or podcast, and it's going to create automatically right after the recording. Um, If I go here where it says made for you, you can see that it's going to create show notes right after. It's going to suggest me some show notes. You can go ahead and if you like it, you can actually use that and you can modify it if you want. Also going to give you like a lot of clips. You look at this and it's going to give you some sort of rating to tell you like which one has the potential to go viral, to have a bigger impact. Obviously, you still need to listen to it. Then if you don't like them or you like it, but like you want to change something, you can actually click edit. And then from there, you can edit and using, by the way, something called text based editing right inside Riverside in the cloud. You don't need to download anything. Basically, it just happens inside Riverside. Now, text-based editing, that's another cool feature you have inside Riverside. Guys, right after recording or going live in like 30 minutes or, you know, maximum maybe one hour, you can have multiple clips ready to be posted, you know, to promote your live stream or podcast. You can have your show notes ready. You can have your thumbnail. Again, thumbnail pro in that perfect if you are a perfectionist. But if it's a podcast, most podcasts have like generic thumbnail with just your picture and then your guest picture maybe and a text on it. That's easy to create in Riverside. You also have your show notes, your raw clips and the audio ready to be edited maybe in another editor if you want that. To be honest, it's just a complete all-in-one tool. And OBS, obviously, when it comes to pricing, it's going to be free. And Riverside is a paid tool. So that's why I still encourage you, if you're just getting started, you can start with OBS, learn how to use it. If you subscribe to my channel, I have a lot of videos to show you how to actually use it to podcast, live stream, multi-stream. You're not going to be able to edit. You're not going to be able to do the clipping. You're not going to be able to get the AI-based clipping. You're not going to be able to get any AI tools, obviously. That's where OBS is going to be limited. And then once they say you get to a point where you feel like time is more valuable or maybe your podcast or kind of, you know, podcast and live stream is getting to another level, right? That's how I switched, by the way, where you're starting to have like, you know, high value guests that don't have time to wait for you while you, you set up OBS and Video Ninja. Because what happened to me back in the day, I started having guests that really valued a lot their time these are like now my friends kind of who want to hang out on a stream or a podcast these were like high value guests they come they want to come and just deliver a lot of value and they don't have time to have to schedule that moment on their calendar so they don't have time to waste they join like five or three minutes before you start the recording and you just gotta be fast 
So that's where you start noticing the limitations of OBS and you're like, yeah, well, I have to invest in a tool that will make me go faster and get results faster. And that's where you can decide to upgrade to Riverside. Now, you can also use both OBS and Riverside. So basically, you can maybe use OBS to live stream, just, you know, single streams where you just you doing a talking head live stream, sometimes multi stream, you know, here and there casually, no problem. And then maybe use Riverside for recording your podcast, creating clips and caption, by the way, like Riverside will just generate these clips with caption, animated caption, overlays. You see those captions on Instagram or other, you know, platforms. So you can use it for that. And anytime you need to kind of multi-stream, obviously. And of course, do the local recording whenever you have guests on and you need to do the local recording to have high quality audio and video for your podcast. So either way, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Now, if you want to try Riverside, I'm going to leave a link down below. And if you decide to pick up one of their paid plans, make sure you use live production discount code to be able to get 15% off. Now, if you want to know how to record a podcast and multi-stream or live stream at the same time using Riverside, I'm going to have a video that I made showing you exactly how to do that. It's going to be linked right here. So check it out. And I'll see you there, guys. Take care.